means uh, this service uh, and it promises to be a really, really powerful uh, series. You know, traditionally for us, September is uh, our, our relationship teaching month, which we usually tag Mr. and Mrs. Better Half. But over the years, we've had feedback about the better half thing, and many people feel that, oh, maybe it's just meant for uh, people who are married or, you know, or people who are actively pursuing marriage. Uh, but our relationship month is usually much more broader than that. And we even want to make it a lot, you know, broader than that. So uh, we, we've decided to make it, you know, more encompassing, and we're going to call our relationship series going forward, Loving and Leaving. So it's about loving and leaving. Not just about loving, but loving and living. And whether you are ready for a relationship or not, whether you are actively engaged in a relationship that will lead to marriage or not, or whether you're married or separated or divorced, or whatever the situation may be around you, we wanted to be able to pick something out of what we'll be discussing this month and subsequently in our relationship month that will be a blessing to you and that you can either use immediately or you'll be able to use as you continue to live your life. So we call this Loving and Living. And this year's Loving and Living series has been tagged Spice. By the way, the Better Half, uh, which has now become a personal ministry, will continue online on, my, on the YouTube page and other platforms that we have set up for uh, Better Half Outreaches, which I now do personally as a personal ministry, all right? So the theme for this year's Loving and Living is Spice, Spice. And as you can see uh, with, with, with the, the set, uh, 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 I'm ready to engage with some spices, if I can put it that way. <laughs> uh, uh, I mean, look at all the, 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 the spices that are here. Uh, uh, all kinds of spices that I, that I have here. Uh, if you get into a great kitchen like the type that I have uh, with me today, uh, you, 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 you have access to all kinds of things uh, to be able to spice up the food that is being prepared. In fact, uh, here in this part of the world, in West Africa, or at least, especially in Nigeria, we have a particular delicacy that we call suya. Suya is like, uh, you know, barbecue. It can be meat, it can be chicken, it can be fish. But there's a particular suya spice that comes from northern Nigeria, which is really uh, the secret source of, of this whole thing that we call suya. Uh, and when they mix this stuff together, in fact, when you want to buy it, it's very expensive because you can literally have your own suya at home. Uh, it's usually, uh, uh, you know, beef suya that is most common around here. And they, they mix all kinds of spices together to give, you know, that very um, tasty uh, feel that comes with this barbecue. So I have all kinds of spices here. This is rosemary. Uh, this is uh, what poppy seed. Um, what else do I have here? Uh, this is Italian spice. Uh, this is uh, uh, major, ma majoram or something like that. I, 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 <laughs> It's obvious that I've not been uh, really interacting with a lot of the spices that I have before me today. Mustard seed, uh, uh, coriander, uh, um, uh, oregano, and uh, black pepper, uh, you know, turmeric, uh, thyme, curry, all kinds of seasonings that we use from time to time when we have to cook a great meal. And a different, I mean, there are different sets of spices that are needful for different kinds of meals. You will agree with me on that. Uh, uh, it, here, also in Nigeria, when you're cooking jollof rice, there's, there's certain things that, has, that, you know, that have to be in the jollof rice for you to make the proper Nigerian jollof rice. And you know, for a, for a while now, we've been talking about which one is better. Because around West Africa here, we have a contention whether it's Nigerian jollof or Ghanaian jollof that is, that, that is better. But I believe that the Nigerian jollof is better, especially the one I grew up with, which is uh, usually made with uh, you know, steel pot with you know, naked fire, not uh, <laughs> fire from firewood. All right, let me not get into all that because I know some people uh, are already salivating right now. Let's, let's get into the word of God. Spice making marriage and relationships better. And I have all kinds of spies that I want to talk about within this series. So I'm starting with the first one, the first spice that I believe that you need uh, to put in into a relationship if you want to make it great. Like I said before, there's, there's a need for a combination of spices. Yeah, 
to be able to make whether it's suya, whether it's jollof rice, or whatever kind of uh, delicacy you prefer that I may not have mentioned because I know some people, all kinds of delicacies are going through your mind right now. But let's come back to focus on relationship. How spicy is your relationship? How tasty is your relationship? You know, all through the lockdown, many relationships have gone through all kinds of situations. And I want, it, I, I want to know how, how, how great is your relationship now. If your relationship were to be put on, on a table to be served, you know, to be served to a guest, perhaps, like this, guests are sitting down, your relationship will be served to them. How, will they say this is yummy? Will they say this is great? That's what we're talking about this season. Would they say this, this is a great thing? This is, this is yummy. This is great. The first spice that, I, that I, I, I want to speak to is what I've called priority. And I'll say, uh, uh, make me feel important. Make me feel important. Make me feel important. Make me feel important. That's the spice I'm speaking to today. In your relationship, uh, do you feel important? Does your spouse feel important? If you are in a dating relationship, do you make the other person feel important? Have you rightly prioritized them, their preferences, what they stand for, and their importance in this arrangement? Is it prioritized in the relationship? It's important for us to understand that the scripture says in Genesis 2 and verse 24, Genesis 2 and 24, it says, for this purpose, uh, I, want, I want us to read that, Genesis 2 and 24, it says, therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Not two, one flesh. You see, when you want to understand the divine concept of marriage, you always need to go back to the book of Genesis chapter 2. The book of the beginning, God explained how marriage is supposed to be. And if we uh, believe that marriage and human relationship, they are all from God, a divine idea that we cannot push aside because as humans, like I used to say, and I always say, we are created for connection, not isolation. Human beings are not supposed to be isolated from other human beings. We are created for connection, not isolation. And the one who created us for connection, who said, it's not good that man should be alone, I will make for him a, a helper that is suitable or comparable to him. Though the man was not complaining, but God knew the way I created man, I didn't create man for isolation, but for connection. So I'm going to make for him another person, another human that he can rightly connect with. So many people today uh, haven't been frustrated in relationships, whether it's just a relationship of friendship, uh, betrayers, all kinds of things, disloyalty that you have faced, and then you've made up your mind, uh, I will just live my life. It's not by force to have a friend. I agree with you, sometimes we have to make that call and say it's not by force to have a friend. But at the same time, you are not created to be alone. And you have to seek to connect with other people. In our journey of life, we will never improve, we will never get better until we connect with other people. We always have our blind spots and God brings people into our lives. First and foremost, to make our lives perhaps sometimes miserable and then it will then become better. It looks like when it comes to how human beings improve, it starts with being miserable before you get better. Even as, as a parent raising a child, sometimes our children feel like we're trying to make their lives miserable when we're trying to make them better. And in adulthood, we hate to be made miserable before we become better. We just want to become better. And when somebody comes into your life, sometimes it looks like they're making your life miserable and you can almost make up your mind, I don't want to be in any friendship, any relationship, any marriage. If, you're, if somebody's listening to me today and you've suffered a divorce and in your mind right now, you don't even want to get into any relationship again, I believe that by the time this series is over, God will have taught your heart to change your mind. Because God still wants you to have vital connections in this world. And one of the greatest vital connections that a man or a woman can have is a great marriage, a good marriage, a good marriage, good partnerships, good friendships. 
That's what God created us for. Because iron will sharpen iron. That's what the scripture says. And a brother will sharpen the countenance of his friend. We get better as we connect with each other. So Genesis 2 and 24, I want to get back to that. He said, a, a, a man shall leave his father, I mean, uh, therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And they too, um, the two of them, they shall become one flesh. And uh, verse 25 says, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. They were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. It's on these two scriptures that I'm going to premise the four spices that I'll be discussing in this series. And like I said, the first one is priority. Priority. And I'll pick the first one from uh, Genesis 2 and 24. The Bible says that a man shall leave father and mother and cleave or be joined to his wife. Leave father and mother. That's what we're talking about today. Leave father and mother. The word used there in the Hebrew for leave is uh, uh, Ezab, which, which means to losing or relinquish. To losing or to relinquish. It speaks to the fact that in marriage or in, when we're trying to get into love relationships, we have to prioritize that relationship and that partner over and above every other relationship that we had before that time, especially the moment it becomes a marriage. We practice it before we, it gets into marriage by creating more time, uh, more opportunities for connection and for knowing each other even while we're still in a dating relationship or courtship relationship. But the moment it gets into marriage, we're losing or relinquish the priority level that we have given to other things in our lives before that time. And the Bible here points to uh, father and mother first. With the assumption that father and mother, if, you, if your, uh, your nuclear family is working well, that should be the highest level of relationship that you, you should have had before marriage. Because your parents brought you up, nurtured and catered to you, and you're supposed to, you know, according to the word of God, honor and respect them and value that relationship and that covenant that you have with them. But the Bible says a man will leave father and mother. And father and mother there, uh, just for somebody who may also be saying, PG, uh, you know, my parents, I didn't even grow up with my parents. or My parents are late. I've been late. Father and mother there just speaks to where you have gotten nourishment. You've gotten nurturing. Where the, the familiar. Well, it may be friends, it may be, you know, uh, parent, parent figures like uncles, aunties. It may be where you just derive some level of connection from. The moment you start to prepare to get into a loving relationship that will lead into marriage, you have to start to practice reprioritizing that relationship over and above the ones that you have been used to. Over and above the ones that you know, have been important to you before now. Gradually. And the moment you step into marriage, then you have to pay attention to that uh, priority a lot more. A lot more. So leave your parents or any other controlling influence or places, person, or dependency and prioritize the new relationship. That's what the scripture is talking about here. Prioritize the new relationship. When I got married or when I was even dating my wife, I had moments of conflict where I needed to either go out with my friends. I mean, I, I'd done ministry for a few years before then in the university and then uh, at Daystar Christian Center. And I had all kinds of friends. I love to connect with people. And sometimes, you know, it looks like you have to leave all these people. Maybe a friend is having a birthday or, or something important or parents' uh, birthday or something and you have been invited. And the person that you are going out with also has something that they want you to be a part of it together. And you're torn in between. That's the time you practice, you know, this loyalty and commitment by saying, look, my, uh, my, my, my babe has something very important that they're doing in their family, and I need to show up. I may have to go there and then come to yours, but to say, look, my, my friend is my friend's father's birthday, so if it's your own sister's birthday or your own father's birthday, I won't be able to make it. I've known this person more than 
uh, for many years. We were in, you know, in elementary school together. I just met you six months ago, a year ago, so I kind of ban on them for you. If you cannot start to make that reprioritizing at that time or practicing higher priority, then something is already going wrong. Something is already going wrong. So if you're single and you're listening to me, I need you to understand that practicing prioritizing and focusing on one relationship, one, one relationship per time, then becomes very important. One relationship, one relationship. Singles, listen to me. When you start to double date, something is wrong. Something is wrong. One relationship so that you can uh, focus appropriately. You know the scripture, Matthew 6 and 22? It says, if your eye is healthy or single, like the New King James put it, you will be filled with light. Yeah. He said, your eye is the lamp. It's like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, I'm reading New Living Translation. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light that you think you have is actually darkness, how deep is your darkness? How deep is your darkness? He said, if the light that you think you have is darkness, how deep is your darkness? I need you to understand one thing, that you, you need to trust God to heal your, uh, your, 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 your perspective, to heal your worldview. You understand what I mean? You, you need healing for your perspective. Some people have a, a negative perspective about giving somebody the right of way or, or prioritizing properly in a relationship or focusing on one person. But when your worldview is healed, you, you, you will understand that uh, what God expects from you is that your high is single. That's what it means. If your high is healthy, if the, the way you think is healthy, he said your body will be filled with light. That means you will enjoy clarity. And, you know, you will enjoy perspective. And it's important that you heal so that you can de deal with utmost clarity. Many people have been in all kinds of relationships. And they're struggling with their worldview. God wants to heal your heart. He wants you to heal so that you can, when you now deal, you're dealing with Clarity, with clarity. If your high is healthy, your body will be filled with life, with, with light. The proof of clarity is ability to prioritize. Ability to prioritize. So you need to practice how to prioritize. All of us have been there one, one time or the other where you need to prioritize and it's, it's a struggle. It's a struggle. But when your perspective has been healed, when your worldview has been healed, when your mindset has been healed, then you, it, it becomes a lot easier to prioritize. You know, there are many uh, people who may, uh, who, who may be joining to this service right now uh, who may still be single and, or, or, or you, you know, you're thinking, when I get a, a better person. Some people are looking for a full package where you have everything in one person. Good looks, good pockets, good bank account, good job good everything, good parents, good, uh, you know, good everything. You know, everything, just full package. Two or three nationalities all together in one. Two pack passports, green and blue or green and red. You understand what I'm talking about? All kinds of things. You just want everything in full package. Continue to wait. Eh? Wait. It will come. <laughs> but can I tell you the truth? There's no full package anyway. Yeah. You're not going to marry an angel. There's no full package anywhere. You just need to be able to clarify what you really want. And you start, be willing to start from somewhere with that person, with the help of God. And you start to see things getting better. Can I also uh, uh, just take a, a little detour here to speak to anyone trusting God this season as we pray, as we engage, that your marital destiny will be fulfilled. Maybe you have waited for long for somebody to marry. I, I want to encourage you that as you get into that mode of praying, trust God for clarity and conviction. There's no perfect person in this world, but God can open your heart, give you a conviction about a person. So as you go on with that person, 
what you realize is that even when you go through stormy waters, then your heart is at peace. I've had all kinds of situations to resolve with my wife in the last uh, uh, 20 years of knowing her and about 17 years of marriage. But anytime there are issues, and I remember what God told me at the beginning and how I prayed and I had my conviction and the peace of God about marrying her, it keeps me calm. It keeps me calm. God is not the author of confusion. The only thing he said in 1 Corinthians 14 and verse 40 is that let everything be done decently and in order. So if I can institute order in my relationship, whether it's a dating relationship or it's a marriage, I will see the end of God in that relationship. If I can institute order, some measure of order to prioritize appropriately. Many relationships are failing right now. Many loving relationships. Many marriages are, are, are failed and are, you know, caving in even this season because our lack of order and lack of priority was amplified by the COVID-19 pandemic. When we had to be in each other's faces a lot more. When we had to be in each other's business a lot more. Lack of priority, lack of order, uh, seeking to ignore your spouse, seeking not to carry them along, all those things are now playing up a lot more because a lot of actions are now more vivid. People can see through many smoke screens of the past because we were constrained to do a lot of things together. Are you still with me today? We're constrained to do a lot of things together. So people can see through, can see through. But when you insist on spicing your relationship with priority, making your spouse feel important, that their voices are heard, you know, that our spouse's voices are heard, that your partner's voice is heard, that it's not just about you. You start to see something differently happening around you. So, it's important to note that when it comes to choosing a life partner, don't underestimate the importance of conviction, divine signals, and hearing from God. So, in a good marriage, or in a good relationship, if I can put it that way, we need to understand that love begins with priorities. Love begins with priorities. Can I say that one more time? Love begins with priorities. Can you hear me say that if you have uh, maybe your, your spouse sitting beside you, maybe you're at home, say love begins with priorities. Love begins with priorities. And if you, if you are in any of our in-person gathering, uh, it's important for you to also just say it out. If you are uh, on, uh, on any of our social media platform, I want you to type it in the comment. Love begins with priorities. Love begins with priorities. It begins with priorities. Now, uh, the priority scale here that I want to show, I need you to follow me very carefully. Uh, please put the priority scale on the sc screen for me. I know this may draw some blood in terms of uh, some people contending with this, but nothing can be further from the truth. Uh, this is, this is uh, God's divine idea for you and I that my, on my priority scale, God is first. God is first. Seeking and serving him. Seeking and serving God. That's what we're created. These people have I made for myself. They will give me praise. That's what he said. He told Jeremiah in Jeremiah chapter 3, before I formed you, I knew you, and I ordained you a prophet to the nation. Jeremiah chapter 1, uh, when you read from verse 3 down there, he said, before I formed you, I knew you. So you existed before you existed. And I created you, I made you exist in full blown because I have a purpose for you. So, a uh, covenant with God, serving him, seeking him, is the topmost priority of any life that will be meaningful. There's a God-shaped hole in the heart of every man, every woman. A God-shaped hole that until you find God and he fills that hole, there's a, there's a sense of whole, whole, um, I mean, hollowness, if I can put it that way. Lack of wholeness. Maybe that's the better way to put it. That exists in the life of a man, a woman, that we, 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 we then want to fill with all kinds of things, from money to drugs to a sense of feeling important to all kinds of debauchery and all that. Meanwhile, that God-shaped hole can only be filled by God himself. So, on the scale of my priority is God, seeking and serving him. The next thing is 
my spouse. Yeah, my spouse. And my spouse and I are one. So the two of us together, we are next to God. We are next to God. After which is our children, if we have children. If we have any, ch any, any children. Yeah, any child at all. Then that's, that's, that, wait, 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 wait. That, that's the third thing there. And then the next is my purpose and calling in life, which we call ministry. And that moves from serving in, in, in your local church to being a blessing to your community like we've taught in the several past weeks. That's another priority of our lives, which is uh, church stroke ministry. How do I want to be a blessing? It's after that that we extend to extended family. Extended family. Close friends. Even when you say covenant friends. Prayer partner. All of them are inclusive. Your prayer partner is not more important than your spouse. Many people have prayer partners. They have people they call covenant partners. They know more about you than your spouse. You are, your priorities are upside down. You are messing up that relationship. You're messing up that relationship. If you, even if you are on, in a courtship relationship right now that I'm speaking, make sure that the person that you are courting, the person that you want to marry, uh, is carried along, is prioritized more than the person that helped you to pray to receive her from God or receive him from God. Because some people, you know, in a bid to uh, actualize your marital destiny, you, you engage with people, you pray together with people, and then you get into a good relationship that God has led you into, and then you subjugate the person to the people you have been praying with. So the people you have been praying with are now the ones telling you, ah, this is what God is saying, you know, uh, don't, don't take it easy with her or don't take it easy with him, do this, do that. Do that. Before you know it, they are coming into your relationship and destroying divine order and messing things up. That's why, you, you know, some people, when you, 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 you want to make a decision on who to marry, it's not bad. The Bible says in the multitude of counsel there is safety. It's not bad for you to talk to your parents, to talk to your friends, to, to your pastor, to church members, to uh, your boss at work, your colleague at work. It's not bad to just talk to them, seek counsel. But the moment you make, you, you've made up your mind, this is the person I want to marry, you need to start prioritizing that person over them and what they say. Because they have helped you to cross a bridge. The moment you cross that bridge, then that relationship takes precedence over all these other relationships. Because many relationships are being scattered right now because of third party influence. Can I say this to somebody here? As you have seen on my scale, uh, there are many other things there, you know, work and career, and then hobbies and interests and many other things that can come under. But one point I want to make today, uh, which I believe it will take some people time for it to really fully sink in, is that your marriage, next to your relationship with God, the next most important relationship in your life is the relationship with your spouse, if you are married. And if you are in a dating, loving, courtship relationship, you need to also start to practice that. If not, it's going to be very difficult for you after you have gotten married to start to give your spouse the right place of priority in the scheme of things. So, if you have put your parents over and above the relationship you have with your spouse, it's time to repent. It's time to change. You need to do something differently. You need to do something differently. In spicing up your relationship, I want to quickly drop uh, two or three things that you need to also prioritize. You know, we're talking about prior priority or prioritizing. You need to prioritize communication and the giving of attention. Communication and the giving of attention. You know, many people have, are in relationships where the people they talk to the most, if you check their WhatsApp, uh, uh, if you check their text message, their call log, a call log, if, I, if your phone <laughs> maybe gets missing today and they say, uh, the three most frequent people you call, you should drop it so that you can get your SIM back or SIM swap and all those things that the, the telecom companies do. For some people, it will be very shameful that your spouse is not one of them. Yeah. And you may say, oh, because I'm, uh, I'm in business of marketing and I call many other people, not my spouse. I, and in some cases, maybe you are right, but there's, there's something else that we need to be able to check that shows that when it comes to communication, 
and giving of attention. If you're married, your spouse is not in the wrong, you know, of the ladder it's at the top of it. Because communication is a proof of life in a relationship. If we're not communicating, that relationship is no longer alive and well. And it's a sick relationship, we have very minimal communication. A very thriving relationship, we have a uh, uh, robust and uh, very, you know, continuous communication. It may not even be uh, seriously periodic. I mean, maybe uh, robust communication once or twice a month, short communication every day in quick successions. There are all kinds of communication levels that I may not be able to speak to today. If it's just a communication to reaffirm somebody, a communication to resolve serious issues, a communication to plan the future together, all kinds of levels of communication that you and I need to focus on, whether you are in a courtship or dating relationship or you are in a marriage. Anything short of that, you are not building the future of that relationship and you are not prioritizing the right things. Anticipating each other's needs is also something that you need to, to, to prioritize. Anticipating each other's needs. You need to prioritize anticipating each other's needs. I remember an incident that happened many years ago. I think I traveled, uh, maybe it was, I think it was while I was uh, schooling at Manchester Business School and I'd gone for class for about two weeks. And then I got back and I'd missed, seriously missed Nigerian food. You know, I really wanted to come back and, you know, take the, the solid, what we call solid food, solid food. Uh, the particular one, you know, Amala that's very good. In other parts of Africa, they call it Ogali in East Africa. Solid food that you can, yeah, that's, that was what I was looking for. Uh, uh, and then I got home, you know, uh, you know, got off from the airport and I was going home, I was thinking, oh, my wife will have anticipated my need. And then I got home and she just said, well, um, uh, it's only bread that's available this night too. And ah, I, it, it pained me to my bones. Yeah. We have to sit down to have a real family meeting to discuss it after then. To say, this is not going to work. This man has been away <laughs> from base for like two weeks <laughs> and he's been eating <laughs> British food <laughs> that is not eating, <laughs> you know, that is not getting there at all. Uh, you know, uh, uh, I've changed, by the way, so that nobody's sending me emails after now or this I've changed. Now I can eat anything. I realized that I also needed to anticipate a need because what happened was that I think it was a Friday or so that I got back and she has had a very busy week. She was working in a bank then and she worked in the dealing room uh, at the bank. Uh, she, she, she coordinated a, a big unit that was very, very tasking and rather than me also empathizing with her, though I was coming back from school, I was tired, but we resolved it. But I, all I was saying was that I didn't anticipate her need. She, didn't anticip she also did not anticipate my need. I also have many other situations where, you know, I will travel like that. My wife will be expecting that, oh, because she has mentioned a particular thing that she needed, that I will just go ahead and buy it. And then I will just say, you know, um, it's good to get back home with a gift, and I will buy something else. And I will see her attitude towards it, and she will be like, look, I've been saying this thing. Is it like you're not listening? And it happens in many homes. Who are you listening to? If you're not listening to your spouse, to be able to anticipate their need and prioritize it. And also, we need to prioritize romance. Prioritize romance, especially in marriage. You know, the level of romance you prioritize in dating relationship is the down one of just showing honor and regard by opening the door for them if you're going out together. You, you shouldn't go beyond that. Yeah, if you're just dating. Open the door, you know, just show some care, uh, uh, be romantic, write some sweet nothing, uh, send some great WhatsApp messages. But in marriage, we need to do more, much more. And in the course of the series, we'll discuss maybe a little more about that. Uh, I, my time is almost gone today. I'm not going to get into the food. And I see some people are already giggling and wondering what I'm... Uh, uh, we, we need to do more. But part of the more that we need to do is that we need to make some deliberate effort at being a little more romantic. Uh, there's a man uh, right here, right now, that needs to go out of your way. Even just go online and say, what, who is a romantic man? Eh? And check. Google it like you Google other things. Somebody, the only thing you Google is exchange rate for <laughs> the currency rate. Just say, ah, how much is uh, maybe dollar to pounds or naira to... Google romance too and check something. Something that can make you, um, make your spouse feel that they have, uh, they are important. That's what we're talking about. And spice up this relationship so that it does not 
continue to remain bland. Nobody wants food that is bland, that is tasteless. Even Jesus, the metaphor he used for you and I as Christians, said we are the salt of the heart. The salt of the heart. And nobody wants to eat food without any kind of seasoning at all. A little bit of salt that will bring the goodness of that food out. If your marriage has been bland, tasteless, this is the time to commit to do something differently. It's time to commit to do something differently, something seriously differently. For everyone who is in a relationship, I need you to know that there's something that is called legitimate jealousy. Even in uh, Exodus 34 verse 14, God was regarded as being a jealous God. Ex Exodus 40, uh, 34 and 14, New Living Translation, that God is a jealous God. Say, for you shall not worship any other God. Say, you must not worship no other God. For the Lord, uh, uh, for, for the Lord, those uh, whose very name is jealous, is a God who is jealous about his relationship with you. If God says, I'm jealous about my relationship with you because I love you, then it's okay for my, my, my spouse sometimes to be jealous about the, the, is a relationship with me or for me to be jealous about my relationship with my spouse. Legitimate jealousy is the righteous emotion that makes you want to protect what is rightfully yours. That's what it does. It makes you want to protect what is rightfully yours. Sinful or destructive jealousy is when we try to get something from someone that is not rightfully ours or try in a wrong manner to hold on to something that is ours. There's a right way to hold on to what belongs to you. There's a wrong way to hold on to it. There's also, uh, uh, it's also wrong for you to go to want to hold on to something that is not legitimately yours. So what am I saying? <laughs> it's important for you and I to understand that in our relationship, we need to watch out for the attention and lack of attention that we get. Because marriage mirrors the relationship that is between me and God. And if the Bible says God can be jealous, then I also need to manage jealousy and make it a righteous jealousy. So when you are starved of emotion, starved of attention, communicate it. It's okay to communicate it. It's okay to say, look, this is righteous jealousy, I'm jealous. I've not been getting attention. Can I say this? If you're single and you are in a relationship with someone who seems not to have time for you or prioritize your relationship, it's a huge red flag. You call, they don't pick. You send messages, they don't respond. It's a huge red flag. It's a huge red flag. And you need to understand that. You need to understand that and protect yourself quickly and speak out. And point it out. Don't just say, oh, he's busy, or she has been busy, or she's this. Mm -mm. If we're really in a relationship, there's a minimal level of attention, of priority, of listening attention that I should get to show that I'm important, to show that this relationship is in order, that this relationship is in order. Very, very, very important. Uh, so, uh, lots of reasonable people you know, fall for the temptation to replace the priority of their marriage with other things. So you see, for example, uh, men will focus more on, uh, on their job or business, or other interests outside of the home, like sports, socials, church activities, and other things like that. Meanwhile, women, on the other hand, will focus more on children. Rather than spicing their relationship with the rightful attention and care, they will focus more on children, other interests within the home. Now, not outside of the home, but within the home. Like, you know, uh, how the kitchen looks, like the, the beautiful kitchen that I have here. How the kitchen is, everything, food is at home, fashion, uh, friends, you know, uh, uh, social media, all those kind of things. Prayer partner and prayer meetings and church activities and all that. Those things get, seem to get a lot more attention because we have overrated them over and above the divine priority that God has given us, which is our relationship with, 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 with our spouse. So it's important that we, we, we get that, you know, uh, straight. If you're like me, you grew up in a system where work 
was considered more important than relationships. Or maybe you believe that children in a home are to be valued above the parents' relationship. Then you need to understand this. And I need to say this as I start to wrap this all up. But there's, there's no fulfillment when you bring a paycheck home to a marriage that has failed. So if you over prioritize work over and above the marital relationship, sometimes it's like you know, digging a grave that you still have to fall into. There's no fulfillment in bringing a paycheck home to a marriage that has failed. And also, the second thing that you need to understand is that our children are <laughs> more important than almost everything in our lives, but they are not as important as God or our marriage. No, they're not as important. Because God gave them to us, and it's because, I mean, and this marriage is needed to be able to raise them to become who God wants them to be. It's in their best interest that we work out and spice up this marriage. I remember a brother many years ago walked up to me in counseling and said, Pastor, I've been used. I've just been used. Somebody used me to get a baby. And since the baby came, I became irrelevant. I became useless. Said, we have waited a few years to get a baby, but I didn't know I was being used. All this medical, all these things that we're doing. Somebody just wanted to have a baby. Said, the moment we had a baby like this, I was, I, the, I, I was bounced out of our bedroom. <laughs> you know, I, I couldn't even sleep in the bedroom again. They said, if I, if I sleep, I snore. So I wake the baby up. And all kinds of things. The guy was totally frustrated. And when we stepped into it, I had to, you know, give some wisdom to, to the woman of the house and all that before they started to put their priorities together. So it's important this week that you understand this week's recipe, the spice is priority. For the married, make a list of the things you, that, that you are prioritized above your spouse and choose to repent. So you can do the, 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 the list of things that you are prioritized above your spouse. And it's time to repent. So to do this, you may need to ask each other. And I'm giving you an, uh, an assignment today, a homework. Yeah. If you're an in-person gathering, then get home and ask each other. If you're watching from home, it's after this service, ask each other. Is there something that you feel I've prioritized beyond you in the scheme of things? And allow your spouse to talk. Allow your spouse to say something. Allow your spouse to say something. And take note with, with a mind that is open to repent and to change. To repent and to change. It's very, very, very important. Very, very important. So, uh, what will you give up to meet, <laughs> this is very important, and I need somebody to follow this. I, 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 I'm closing right now, but I need somebody to follow this. What will you give up to meet my needs and be with me? That's the question we need to ask each other. How important am I to you compared to other people and things in your life? These are questions that I want couples to ask each other at this time. What will you give up to meet my needs and be with me? Because if you're will, you not willing to give up anything at all, you're saying that this relationship is not important and however it ends, is not important to you. How important am I to you compared to other things or other people and things in your life? For the unmarried, it's important also to note this. What are your current priorities? And... Um, how do they hate relational success? Do they hate relational success? You're, you're not in uh, a love relationship now. You're not married or whatever. But your current priorities, the things that are important to you right now, are they hating relational success or are they destroying your capacity to be successful in a relationship? How are you preparing to leave so that you can cleave? Lastly today, I need you to understand something. That the plan of God and the word that God has put in my heart, which is what we're going to pray with, and I want you to continue to pray with it, is in Isaiah 32, verse 15. Isaiah 32, and verse 15. Until the Spirit is poured upon us from on high, and the wilderness becomes a fruitful field, and a fruitful field 
is counted as a forest. As a forest. Wherever you are right now, somebody may be in the wilderness. But God wants to pour out his spirit upon that relationship. He said, until the spirit is poured forth from on high, and then the wilderness will become a fruitful field. Somebody may be in a relationship now that is a fruitful field. God wants to make that fruitful field to be counted as a forest where things grow, where there's bountiful fruit and all that, bigger than what you just need in a home. What you get in a forest is not just what you get in a fruitful field. A fruitful field looks like a garden behind your house, but a forest is what can feed everybody. God says, I can move you from wilderness to fruitful field and then to a forest. And that's what I wanted to pray about today. I wanted to pray about that. That God will move your relationship from a wilderness to a fruitful field and then uh -uh, to a forest. But he said it's when the Spirit is poured forth from on high. And you remember uh, 1 Kings 18. Elijah commanded the Spirit to fall, the fire to fall. But the Bible says in verse uh, 33 of 1 Kings 18, he, Elijah put the wood in order first. It's time to prioritize and to reorder your relationship so that the hand of God can come upon it. God hates disorder. 1 Corinthians 14 and 40. Let all things be done decently and in order. And when we prioritize our spouses, when you prioritize things in your relationship, the way things are supposed to be, when you refuse to put your children before your spouse, because somebody may have 1,001 reasons for doing that, putting your, your, your parents before your spouse, 1,000 reasons for doing that, it does not make it right. And the blessing of God will not be maximized over that relationship until you, uh, you know, talk in your ego, confront the situation, and turn, start to put the priorities right. And trust God for wisdom to be able to do it. Will you lift your two hands with me wherever you are right now? Right here in the auditorium, uh, 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 outside on the online church, lift your two hands with me and just say, Lord, give me the wisdom, the grace to be able to reprioritize my relationship. I want you to bless this relationship. I want your blessing over it. I want your spirit to be poured forth over it. I receive grace to reorder, to reprioritize, to spice up this relationship with priorities, with the right priorities, so that things can move forward. A man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. Uh, 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 and the two of them shall become one flesh. Give me grace to leave some things behind. Give me grace to reprioritize. I wanted to speak to God today. Speak to God today. Give me grace to reprioritize. Give me grace to reprioritize. Speak to God. Speak to God. Speak to God. Give me grace. Grace to reprioritize. Grace to reprioritize. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you. Lord, we bless your holy name. Lord, we bless your holy name. Will you ask for a fresh release of his spirit over your home right now? As you reprioritize, as you set things in order, the spirit of God will flow into that home like never before. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Uh, and a wilderness shall become a fruitful field. That home that is about to break, that looks like a wilderness. Nothing is growing there. Joy is not growing. Peace is not growing. I speak against the hand of the devil over that home right now. And I decree in the name of Jesus that the wilderness shall be turned to a fruitful field. Holy Spirit, we ask that you move over every marriage, every relationship, and every intention to get into a godly relationship. We ask that you move over us right now. Let wilderness be turned into a fruitful field. Where there has been fruitfulness, a fruitful field where there has been joy, peace, happiness, and multiplication. Lord, take it to a new level. Let every fruitful field become a forest. In the name of the Lord Jesus. We declare right now that the hand of God comes upon your home. Restoration. Restoration of peace. Restoration of joy. Restoration of divine direction. In the name of Jesus, you will no longer be stranded in your pursuit of your marital destiny. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you glory and we give you praise. We give you glory and we give you praise. And if there's anyone under the influence of my voice today, you may be saying, PG, I don't know Jesus as my Lord and personal Savior. Whether you're watching online, on the online church, or you're in any of our locations, you want to make a decision to follow Jesus. Can I request that you put your hand on your heart right now? Or somebody who may be saying, I gave my life to Christ before, but I backslid into sin and I want to rededicate my life to God. Maybe the reason why you are even far away from God right now is because of a relationship that went bad. God wants to restore you and he will restore you back into a, a better relationship in the name of Jesus. Will you put your hands on your heart as you rededicate your heart to Jesus? I want to say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I've come to reprioritize my life. 
to make you number one. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Be my King. I declare today that I want to live my life for you. To be a fully devoted follower of Jesus Christ from this moment forward. So I declare that my life is fully rededicated to you. I am born again. I'm a child of God. Sin shall no longer have dominion over me from this moment forward. Thank you for forgiving my sins and for accepting me as your child. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. If you just said that prayer with me, uh, uh, you'll see some messages on the screen. If you're an online church, you, you will be able to reach out to us to let us know that you just gave your life to Christ. If you don't mind, go to the chat room and let us know now. I just gave my life to Christ. Just put it there. And there's a, a, a Zoom uh, uh, platform that will show on your screen where you can join us for a chat just for a few minutes uh, uh, the moment this service is over. We have some gifts that you want to, we want to give you, some things that will help you to become a more stable uh, Christian. Thank you uh, for uh, making that decision today, and may the Lord bless you. Uh, it's time for us to share our communion uh, together, and I want you to, whatever you have set aside as communion materials, I want you to pick them up right now uh, as we pray over the communion element and share the communion together. We believe that the hand of God continues to stand strong over you and your household this season. As we share the communion, uh, we believe that this is the body, uh, the Christ's body that was broken for us and his blood that was shed for us. We do this to remember the finished work of Christ on the cross of Calvary that brought us redemption, salvation, protection, and preservation. So I pray over every vital relationship in your life today that my God will preserve those relationships. They will not scatter. Every destiny ordained relationship that is threatened right now, business partnership, career partnership, uh, uh, loving relationships that should lead into marriage, marriages that are threatened, the blood of sprinkling speaks over every relationship right now. The blood that speaks better things than the blood of Abel that speaks instead of vengeance, speaking mercy. So I decree that the blood speaks mercy over every vital relationship that God has planted you into. In the name of Jesus, in this month of September, enjoy divine restoration of God-given relationships. Anyone that may have been alone, I decree at this time, as you partake of this communion, my God connects you with the right person. Right person for business. Right person in your career path. Right person for marriage. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we thank you. And we'll give you glory and praise in Jesus' precious name. Please go ahead and partake of the communion. Thank you, Father. Lord, we bless your name. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you praise. We give you glory. We give you praise. All right, if it's the first time joining us on any of our online platform, I also want to welcome you very, very specially. Uh, uh, we, we love to welcome guests you know, at the Elevation Church, uh, online church platform. Uh, and I want to invite you to join us the moment th this, this service is over on our Zoom platform where we welcome our guests. We have some gifts for you. We also want to get to know you better. I promise you to not take more than five minutes of your time, just five minutes. If you can just hit uh, that Zoom link there, uh, type it out, uh, the, the number, and get to us on the live chat on Zoom. The moment this service is over right now, please be with us if it's your first time. Uh, let us know it's your first time. And if you can also go to any of our chat rooms there and let us know it's my first time. It's my first time. We'd love to send you a link with which you can join us and also download some of our gift, uh, electronic gifts that we would love to give you. Digital gift, I mean, that we would love to give you. Thank you very, very much uh, for coming to be a part of our service. Now, I need to encourage you as you continue to, for the reason of you who want to continue to stay at home, maybe because of your children or maybe because you are, are over and above the age bracket, that can go for in-person gathering, or maybe you're not just comfortable yet with in-person gathering, I want you not to forget your Sunday routines, joining the service, making sure that if you have kids, they also, they also participate in the service. It's very, very important. The Lord will keep you and perfect all that concerns you this season in the name of Jesus. I also want to ask at this time that you package your offerings, uh, your tithes, whatever it is, get, up, get, up, uh, get, get your devices. It's time to give to God. We give because we love God and because we're a vital part of his kingdom. And one of the ways we worship is through giving. So I, I, I want you to honor God with your substance at this time as you uh, engage any of the uh, electronic platforms with which you can give. Uh, the short code platform, uh, the wire transfer, 
and the, the, the web pay, which is a secured platform at elevationng.org forward slash giving. You can use any of your cards from wherever you're watching from, from around the world. Uh, it's a secured platform, and you, you don't have to bother about security. That is completely sorted, and it's been used over and again uh, without any security issues at all. So please go ahead and be a blessing to the ministry uh, of the Elevation Church as you give and support the, 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 the work of God uh, so that we can continue to reach you and reach even further to the hands of the health at this time. Uh, I, I, I pray a blessing over every giver that the hand of God will come upon you, that the heavens open upon you, that the favor of God rests upon your life, that this month of September there shall be no lack. Uh, and doors that have been shut before will start to open. Enjoy unusual divine presence in the name of Jesus. May this seed open the heavens over your life. And, and, and continue to uh, engage you and your heart with all the divine ideas that God has for you for this season in the precious name of the Lord Jesus. And somebody say, believe in, amen. Praise God. Thank you again for being a part of this service. I uh, hope to see you again uh, on Wednesday and next Sunday. Uh, we'll take some more announcements as we bring the service to a close. Uh, please don't go yet. Engage the announcement. God bless you. I know you've had a wonderful time in God's presence. Our next event will hold on Wednesday by 6.30 p.m. West African time online. And it will stream on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and MixLR. Ensure you follow us or subscribe to our social media channels at Elevation NG so that you can get service alerts once we start. Please join us for our morning prayers from Mondays to Saturdays from 6 a.m. to 7 a.m. Again, West African time on Zoom and MixLR. The links are now being displayed and would also be shared on social media. Are you geared up for spicy Wednesdays this September at Switch? Well, you had better be because this Wednesday, the 9th and the 16th, we're going to be discussing why relationships fail. And on Wednesday, the 23rd, we'll have a talk show tagged The Spice and the Spoiler, how to make or maim your relationship. Then on Wednesday the 30th, we'll have a special worship experience. So you can see you can't afford to miss any switch event this month, and so we'll see you there. Membership classes for the month of September will hold on Saturdays the 12th and 26th of September at 8 a.m. online. To become a registered member of the Elevation Church, you can attend any of these classes. So please register via the link now being displayed. The Elevation Church Institute, that's TechEye, which is for people intending to join our workforce, will also hold online. Now, the Batch A will hold over two weeks, that is September the 5th and the 12th. If you missed yesterday's class, please plan to join Batch B, which will now hold the 19th and the 26th of September. Please register for your respective levels using the links that are now being displayed. If you haven't done so already, please sign up to be a part of our online community where you can engage with people online for prayer, for counsel, and even for friendship. Simply visit onlinechurch.elevationng.org to join in. And you can also join a small group by sending an email to smallgroups at elevationng.org. If you have a testimony, please share it by sending an email to testimonies at elevationng.org. And if you want to reach out to us at any time during the week, we are just an email or a call away. Simply mail us via info at elevationng.org or text us on 0700 Elevate. That is 0700 353 8283. Don't forget to speak to somebody about Jesus this week. Thank you for listening and God bless you. Did you know that we also broadcast our services on TV? That's right. You can save some precious data and watch us on the following channels. always have a beyond the ordinary experience if you place your faith in the supernatural. I'm very glad you have decided to embark on this study we're called Pleasing God. Uh, sometimes we forget that our relationship with God is symbiotic. We can be so laser focused on getting from God that we forget that we were created for his good pleasure. So, 
just as we would love to be pleased by him, by God, he also wants to be pleased by us. Uh, and as, as we go on together in this study, we will learn how to please God. <laughs>